Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a request. I was requested by Christy, I think she goes by Christy O on YouTube and she's also on Instagram. Christy requested that I do skin scent versus beast mode fragrances and I think that's such a good idea, such a good topic and the way that I'm going to do it is things are blowing around here the way that i'm going to do it is first of all i'm going to give you my opinion on skin scent versus beast mode so a short opinion and then i'm going to give you some examples of beast mode and skin scents from my collection and not only is this about my opinions but christy specifically said she'd love me to make it a tag video so that we can get lots of opinions because opinions are definitely going to vary there are people out there that love beast mode that's all they want from their fragrance and that some people really just prefer very very soft and subtle scents and then there's people who are maybe in the middle or like to pick from both categories so we shall see so i'm tagging two groups of people they are fragrance chat groups that i'm in and they are all people that create content in some way or another whether it's youtube instagram or written blogs so you are all tagged i will let you know in the group chats but do not let that stop you doing it if you're not in those group chats if you fancy sharing your opinion and sharing your favorites of the beast mode and skin scent fragrances that you've tried then please do so just be sure to tag me so that i can see it and if you use a hashtag that we can all find that would be amazing and i thought just do hashtag skin scents versus beast mode so hashtag skin scents plural skin scents versus beast mode and then that way anyone that's interested can click on a hashtag whether it's on instagram youtube or whatever and find your thoughts opinions and favorite fragrances so let's get on with it starting with my opinion actually i've got like um I've done a chart, sort of chart. I don't, I don't know that you would call that a chart. Um, I've got the skin on one side, beast on the other, and the pros. I think we've got pros and cons for both. So with the skin set, you're never going to offend because obviously it's not a big, strong perfume. People are only going to smell it if they get up close. So there's no chance you're ever going to offend anyone. So it's a very safe option. That's what's great about skin scent. Now, of course, on the opposite side of that, beast mode, looking at the cons of a beast mode, beast mode fragrances can offend. And you may not think that the fragrance is offensive to you because maybe it doesn't have anything that you think is bad in it. It's not animalic, say. It doesn't have oud in it or it doesn't have leather. Even if it's a beast mode white floral, you might assume everyone will like it. The problem with beast mode is everyone's gonna smell it. You'll have some people that tell you that they get a headache from strong scents. Some people will tell you they be, they get asthmatic. If that's what they believe, then, then that's quite possibly what's gonna to happen to them. You might also find that your fragrance has, um, has the ability to remind someone of something unpleasant in their lives. So if you, especially if you're wearing a really popular fragrance or maybe even one that was popular years ago, you could remind someone of a an unpleasant relative or ex-partner or all sorts of things. So there's always this danger with a very strong scent is that you are going to offend in one way or another just because you are inflicting that fragrance on everyone around you. When it comes to skin scents, there is a subtlety about them that could be considered classy and sophisticated, whereas with a beast mode, it, you're never going to have a beast mode fragrance that can simultaneously be considered classy because anything big, loud and in your face it is never really going to be classy. It might be admired, it might be respected, it might be liked, but there isn't really any chance that someone's going to say that a massive beast mode fragrance is classy or sophisticated. Another problem, so there's quite a lot of cons with beast mode at the moment. Another problem with beast mode fragrances is a lot of them, not all of them, but quite a lot of them, particularly modern niche. Bloody aeroplanes. Bloody hell. 
the joys of living by an airport. It's only a little airport. I forgot what I was saying because of the bloody aeroplane, but I now am back on track. So a lot of Beast Mode perfumes, as I said earlier, not all of them, but quite a lot, really heavily rely on some aroma chemicals that I personally, and I know a lot of my followers and friends also struggle with, the very dry, scratchy, woody type aroma chemicals, the likes of Amber Max, Amber Extreme, even Ambroxan in high doses can be intolerable to some people. And unfortunately, they do such a fabulous job of making a perfume very strong and very long lasting. So that's why they end up in a lot of beast mode perfumes. If you don't like those particular aroma chemicals, aro aroma, yeah, that's right, isn't it? Aroma chemicals. Anyway, whatever. If you don't like that kind of thing, then you're not going to like quite a lot of beast mode perfumes. Another thing with wearing beast mode fragrances is that I think you can find yourself being judged by other people just because your fragrance is so obnoxious. They may well think that you as a person are obnoxious or maybe that you're trying too hard. I know that I find, and uh, you know, this, may, this might make me a bad person, it probably does. But when I smell a gentleman wearing a very strong perfume, I just assume he's trying very hard. And that's not always a good look. So let's get on to some of the cons of skin scents. So the thing with skin scents is no one can smell them unless someone is coming right up close to you. No one's really going to smell them. And a lot of people wear their fragrances, not just for themselves, but they also like the feeling that other people are going to catch whiffs and find their scent attractive. I'm one of those people. I wear my fragrances for me, but I also want someone in my, you know, close-ish circle to be able to smell something or catch a little whiff of my sillage as I stroll <laughs> as I stroll on by you know I, I quite like the idea of uh, of strolling past someone and then turning their head because they suddenly catch a whiff of something that I consider to be really beautiful when it comes to skin scents oftentimes that that projection is obviously not happening unless you are really really close to someone and let's face it you're only going to get really really close to your intimate partner or your your immediate family so for those of us that actually want a little bit more of a noticeability with our fragrance then a skin scent might not cut it so I mean, kind of, that kind of tells you where I sit here I'm sitting on the fence in the middle actually I have not many skin scents and not many beast mode fragrances in my collection. I definitely stride the middle ground and I think most people probably will. The majority will rather have something that you can smell if you're within arm's length for a little bit more, but isn't knocking people sideways. So yeah, I am not I am neither for skin scents nor for beast mode. I believe beast mode has its place. And I think if you want a well-rounded collection, you might want one or two beast mode fragrances. Beast modes are great for going to concerts, busy, crowded pubs, outdoor events, anywhere where maybe you're going to get assaulted by a lot of different scents especially if you go somewhere where there, there might be hot and sweaty people, I think a beast mode fragrance can offer you a shield because your scent bubble is so strong, it's gonna at least water down some of the less nice smells around you. And not only that, you're gonna be competing and sometimes you, you want everyone to smell you in a really big crowded type of environment not everyone will feel that way i do i definitely wear big strong beast mode fragrances to busy shit it's all right we're okay we nearly lost we nearly broke a beast mode like a hectic crazy wild beast mode scent we nearly broke it and it would have erupted and probably sent all my neighbors crazy <laughs> it's that strong um 
So honestly, if you had, if I had to choose to own only beast mode scents or only skin scents, I would probably go skin scent and then I would just overspray and respray my skin scents because most skin scents don't start off as skin scents. Oftentimes you'll get an hour or so from a skin scent with a little bit of projection. So if I had to choose one or the other, I would go skin scent. So now I've got for you uh, with a couple of suggestions. If you prefer your fragrances to be more skin scent, then I've got some suggestions for you in that uh, you choose the formula, choose the um, base material to match. And the best way to get a skin scent is with solids. So this is Alien. Now, I think we all know that Alien, the original Alien, apparently not as beast mode as it used to be. But the Alien I remember is mega, mega beast mode. Really, really strong, heavy on the jasmine. It's a jasmine amber big big weird kind of crazy but lots of people love it fragrance now this is a solid this is actually like a gel if I can, you can see that it's a, a clearish pinky color gel it smells like alien it's beautiful very uh, kind of like almost fruity jasmine it's probably not as ambery as the eau de parfum or even the eau de toilette but if you love the smell of Alien, but you couldn't possibly wear it because it's too beastly, then this is called the Stilo Parfumant Perfuming Pen. And that will give you the Alien feel in a more skin scent like way. And the same goes with oil formulas. I'm not talking about Atars because apparently they're really strong. But here's Honey Amber from Tion Weinfeld. This one, as you can see, it's got some beautiful solidification going on in here but the honey amber is in a lovely oil base natural oil it's all natural in here and this one's slightly spicy and citrusy gently ambery white floral really really beautiful but being an oil it doesn't project so you get a little projection you'll get a bit of projection but it is mostly a skin scent and I think if you go for solid perfumes or oils that is the way to go if you want a skin scent if you really don't want something that's really overpowering I've got now some perfumes or another another thing you can do actually from my beast mode I mean this is beast mode but another thing you can do is, is dabbers and miniatures are always dabbers almost always dabbers particularly designer miniatures so if you don't want beast mode if you love a beast mode perfume but you don't want it to be beast mode on you then get the miniature and do little dabs and yeah but this one is poison so let's just jump into the beast mode fragrances po poison is this crazy plum tuberose incense woody it's a tiny bit of vanilla in there but really it's mostly about this crazy wild tuberose incense um plum thing it's crazy it's very beast mode i think even the current this is a vintage miniature but even the current formulation pretty crazy albeit a little softer in the dry down and more vanillic than the original but poison is a well-known beast mode perfume it was actually banned i think it was banned in the 80s from restaurants because it was too obnoxious another beast mode here this is discontinued it's miss Dior Le Parfum has a vintage feel to it. It's a rose amber patchouli. I get a fizz, like a vintage fizz. I don't know if there's some sharp aldehydes. So the opening's a little sharp, but there's a really lovely ambery vanillic dry down. It's gorgeous. It's very, very strong. It acts like uh, a very concentrated perfume and it is beast mode. Lover's Tale from Francesca Bianchi. Can kind of tell sometimes just by the color of the juice how strong something's going to be i'm going to read you the notes of this one it's honey mimosa aldehydes bergamot oris heliotrope peach jasmine rose leather castorium musk labdanum oak moss vetiver sandalwood and for me this is <sighs> it is beautiful it's really strong really concentrated 
and it is on the animalic side i get mostly the oris the leather's not too harsh it's kind of softened i think by the oris and uh a very light fluffy fruitiness in there which i guess is the peach and then when it dries down you you get quite a lot of the oak moss in that dry down oak moss and vetiver together kind of um giving you that grassy rooty mossy kind of feel i love 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 the dryer it's really musky and addictive and beautiful in into the dry down of getting past the the heavier oak moss and then it sort of like becomes more musky and very very sexy and i think that oris in here is absolutely amazing but it is full-on beast mode it's one that i would only if i was wearing this out and i have worn it out a few times i usually just wear it to bed alone but i have worn it out a few times and i control my sprays two sprays max and I usually wait half an hour or so for it to settle before I go out, out, before I leave the house, because I find that it, it just gets better and better with time. So that is the lover's tail, definitely a beast mode. And then the last one, I only showed this in yesterday's video and I couldn't spray it yesterday. I have uh, washed out and soaked this sprayer thing and I actually got it to spray. So let us spray and this one it really feels the air so it's alien essence absolute another discontinued one and i do think when you are searching for beast mode in the designer realms the way to go is backwards in time the more older the bottles the formulations the stronger you'll find perfumes because a back then I guess that was our taste um humans <laughs> humans prefer really strong beast mode fragrances think of things like beverly hills what was that beverly hills one really really strong and they can be found uh, i'm not talking about necessarily digging out a vintage formulation you can still find in production classic 80s and 90s perfumes and they're still big they might not be as big as they were because some ingredients have been restricted and and some have had to have been changed because of cost etc but still if you go back to classics you're going to find big beast mode shoulder pads blue eyeshadow all of that but this doesn't smell classic and old-fashioned this is a gourmand version of alien very very rich vanillic amber with uh, the jasmine really rounded out because of that almost a uh, little marzipan like it's, it's definitely gourmand very very strong you don't need a lot but it is beautiful i think it's a out of everything from the beast mode sense it's the most mass appealing or certainly more modern feel because of it being gourmand and very rich in the vanilla let's now move oh hang on i forgot the big the big one the one that's explosive <laughs> this is so explosive this is crazy so this is an antoni and antonio gordoni's antonio antonio gordoni fragrance some of you probably can guess what it is already if you guess what it is put it in the comments now and now i'm going to show you what it is it's tyrannosaurus rex from zoologist this stuff is nuclear i'm not sprayed a lot this stuff is so strong and unusual and weird and where do i even start so i was going to write the notes down but the notes are, are firstly a very long list secondly i don't think you you really need the notes to understand this perfume it's it's a very strange perfume but the inspiration was basically the end of the world at the time the dinosaur so t-rex obviously when um when the world just suddenly exploded or whatever <laughs> whatever happened and all the dinosaurs died out this is the scent of that day <laughs> it is smoky there's some smoky notes in here i think the cade and oil olibanum and other things that are smoky but there's also quite a few florals so the effect is florals on fire imagine a field of beautiful white florals and then they just start sort of like set alight um 
There's a greenness here as well. It is big, big, big. There's a lot going on in here and it's strong and it's weird <laughs> and some would definitely say obnoxious. Very creative perfume. It's a piece of art but could totally be one of those ones that offends someone. Really, really interesting perfume though. So that's my Beast Mode selection and now I've got my skin scent selection i'm going to talk to you about the one i wore to bed last night which, I, which is beautiful and actually this is a solid as well this is called a rose for the miss a rose for the miss so i need to say it properly because there's a question mark at the end here a rose for the miss so this is a rose for the miss <laughs> and it's by one way bridge perfumes and this one is a solid it's it's a very simplistic sustainable packaging vegan and recyclable it's a solid extract so it's still strong and do a little bit up here it's still a concentrated scent but because it's in that solid state it doesn't give off like a big fragrance like an alcoholic fragrance alcohol pushes that scent out and this keeps it close but when you are close it's still a very noticeable scent so I, I wouldn't say this is necessarily purely skin scent but just the fact that it's in the form of a stick keeps it from being a big projector and it's beautiful to wear to bed so it's a rose fragrance of course it's a very soft romantic pink girly kind of rose to me it smells like it's mixed in with a load of musk clean fluffy musk there's no musk note listed that's what i get initially when i smelt it i thought i got violet as well i don't think i do i think i just relate it to the likes of missia lipstick rose it's it's in that sort of ballpark that sweet soft fluffy musky rose there's a note in here called uh, it's kiki harakiki harakiki and i looked it up and it's some sort of plant it has some um, has some medicinal value also can be used uh, to make things ropes and um all sorts of things with and apparently the scent is a little nectar like and can and the nectar of the plant can be used as a sweetener for cooking etc so i'm guessing that's where some of the sweetness comes from but mostly to me, it's a very fluffy musk rose in a very romantic style. And I absolutely love it. And it's so nice for bed. Gives me boudoir vibes, powder, you know, puff, puffy, um, puff, powder puffs. That's it. Powder puffs and lipstick and makeup and all of that sort of stuff. And it's beautiful. But also makes me think of soft, clean skin that's been scented with maybe rose water and a dusting of powder all of that stuff love it so the next one i'm talking about is this one here it's called nuda veritas from atelier des Ours. this was gifted to me by the lovely megan from atelier at this most recent essence event this one because of this musky clean feel that it has is definitely not a big projector it is a skin scent this one has cologne, which is that sort of melon-like fresh air, often used to create an aquatic accord. So if you are averse to cologne, you don't want this one in your life because it is a noticeable note. It doesn't bother me at all. I quite like it. It's also got orange blossom, bergamot, osmanthus, tiara. It's got an ambroxan note listed. I don't get it at all, thankfully. And Brett, which is that beautiful musk mallow note. And you've got Tagets, which means marigold. Generally speaking, I don't like marigold, but it is absolutely, I don't pick it up in here, so that's fine. Oak moss and patchouli in the base, they are very, very, very subtle. And I think they just lend it the longevity. So this one to me is a very musky, clean, skin like scent so you've got ambrette that is often linked to the scent of skin 
and I, it to me it smells like irisy as well so it smells like iris clean mask skin but with this very gentle clean floral and citrus thing going on but the, the florals and citrus are very very gentle and they blend in so it's a very creamy scent but not in a rich and sweet way it's gently gently sweet and very much a skin scent it could be a perfect professional setting type fragrance white shirt kind of fragrance wear it to a meeting wear it if you work around people that are a little more sensitive to scents it's a perfect scent for every day not to offend but to smell nicely put together so that's nuda veritas i guess nuda probably means nude and that totally makes sense to me the next skin scent is Protectra from maison longcom love this i'm so pleased i finally got one of these bottles i never fell in love with any of the line i like a lot of them but never to the point of wanting to buy one and then i got a decant of this and really really enjoy it so the only notes listed on Fragrantica are white musk rose and benzoin but to me it's in a in a way the it's similar to the base of nuda veritas in that i get clean musk skin powdered skin lotion um iris makeup and I, like picture a white thick clean body lotion bloody aeroplanes i'm just going to carry on with that lovely rose and the rose is very gentle it's definitely noticeable but it's kind of fresh it's a clean scent for sure but clean and musky and warm and embracing so i really love that one protectra just means perhaps so it's a scent of possibilities perhaps and then my last skin scent is angelique from papillon now liz was on my channel very recently and she actually said that the inspiration behind angelique was the scent of her children when they were babies so if you think of how babies smell the the scent of the baby's head that kind of thing and this is a very cozy gentle kind fragrance so you've got oris, osmanthus, mimosa, champaca, cedar, olibanum, and they're the only listed notes on Fragrantica. But for me, this is all about the iris. It's mixed in with the yellow, the yellowness of the, I guess the mimosa, the fluffy yellowness of the mimosa. Almost makes you think of champagne, but without it being sharp, it's very soft and fluffy. And the osmanthus is very, very light. Sometimes osmanthus makes makes you think of leather and apricots. I don't really get the leather from osmanthus, more of a, an apricot feel, adding to the yellowness, so the overall yellow glow of the perfume. Yellow, fluffy, you think, yeah, champagne, but not sharp. Fluffy yellow petals lots and lots of clean fluffy musk fluffy blankets baby blankets baby blankets baby heads cotton everything that's soft and lovely and, and maternal and innocent and then i think you get a slight earthy greenness in here as well into the dry down but a really beautiful scent i don't think i'd call it a strictly skin scent but it's almost like your skin but better kind of scent and one of the lightest if not the lightest in the papillon range and if you control the sprays it could be a skin scent you could just do one or two sprays underneath your clothes so it diffuses and it's going to be more like a skin scent but that is really really beautiful i forget how stunning that is so before I go, I want to say a big thank you to Wildflowers who supported me on Ko-fi. If you'd like to do the same, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. And I really, really appreciate it. So thank you again, Wildflowers. Much appreciated. And that's it. That's the end of the video. If you are tagged, you'll have a message in the group chat. But do not wait to be tagged if you want to do the video. Please do so. Don't forget to use the hashtag skin sense versus beast mode so that i can keep checking and seeing who's 
who's up to uh, who's up to the challenge of talking about skin sense and beast modes and what your opinions are if you just want to talk about it in the comments below please do so as well don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in another video bye